Is this on? All right. Just about the BBC story real quick. The funny thing was that I didn't see the gorilla at all, yet I was interviewed because they were able to put it out there as the gorilla got loose, so the gorilla was in everybody's heads, right? But it never actually happened. One of the learnings about how perception is more important than actual fact or data. All right, on to the talk. Can I get my screen? Just restart this. So I believe that if you look at data, and it's about human behavior, you actually do become a psychologist. So with my talk, I'm going to show you how to look at data with the lens of a psychologist to maybe look in the right places before you get too much of it. And I want to start yes, with a study they have done, where they were selling furniture online. And it was on the left side, the variety that's kind of a comfortable and expensive, and the right side, the IKEA variety, much less expensive. And they changed the background. They either put some clouds in there or some coins. And now when the clouds were in the background, people on the side would search and buy the more comfortable, more expensive furniture, and with the coins, they would buy the stuff that was a lot cheaper. Well, why? So if you listen closely, you will understand why, and hopefully use those insights when you look at your data set the next time. Now, you can look at data many different ways. If you just go purely kind of mathematically, you would use techniques like these to do feature reduction. You have way too many columns, and some of them may contain missing data. There's a couple of techniques that you can use, some of them more effective than others, to kind of, you know, look at less and actually produce better models. But I'm not going to talk about that at all. Rather, I'm going to talk about memory consolidation and associations. So the memory consolidation, I think, can focus your search. You know, before you, you run your analysis, you know already where to look. And the associations, I think, are a very interesting phenomenon, especially when you look at marketing-related data. But first, I will tell you exactly how consolidation works by having it done by you. So I want you to have your phone or a piece of paper ready, so because at the end of this exercise, you're going to have to write down a sequence of letters. So what's going to happen next is I'm going to show you letters, and then followed by a mathematical equation. And when you think that mathematical equation is correct, you raise your hand. Let's try that. Everybody raise their hand. Oh, very good. And if it's not correct, you don't. All right? That's just for me to see that you've solved it. There's going to be many letters, many equations. Don't write anything down yet. Just keep it in your head. At the end, you want to repeat the sequence of letters in order. Let's begin. Thank you. <laughs> Some people are doing it. Very good. So now please write down the sequence of letters that you remember in order on some kind of medium. Or just repeat it to yourself until you're pretty sure that you know where each letter went. And just to make sure, I made this quite difficult because I figured that you guys are kind of smart. All right, so the correct letter, uh, sequence of letters is this. OK? So now, who of you got the first one correct? Hands up. That's almost everyone. How about the second one? Just keep them up if you're still right. Third one? Fourth? Fifth? Sixth? All right. It always goes down. How about the very last one? And the one before? Okay. So that works. Because when you go, go up in the data, you see the recall rate, and there's something called the primacy effect. Everything in a sequence that you see first, you will remember quite well. And then the thing at the end, uh, the recency effect, everything at the end will also remember well. 
The reason may be, uh, or I believe, is because there's more interference between those letters in the beginning and in the end there's less, because obviously there's nothing that came before and there's nothing that came after. But this is very interesting because I find at least that in, when doing time series analysis, the first interaction and the couple of last interactions are usually the ones that are most important, that have the best predictive power. So this kind of uh, forgetting curve is actually part of a, uh, a bigger phenomenon in memory where repeated uh, rehearsal obviously makes you better, right? If you read the book twice, you're going to remember it better. But usually you don't need to, you just need to uh, rethink of it. So when I give you this, this weird sequence on day one, you're going to forget it in about six days. Well, well if you believe this graph, uh, this is actually an uh, unrelated graph to that. Um, but then if you rehearse it the second day, that curve will flatten. And then the third, it will flatten again until if you do it every day for the rest of your life, you know, you will maybe your last words. But the important thing here is, uh, actually a really fun fact here is that you can train yourself to know something at a specific point. So for example, if you want to remember something in 10 months, you should just study it once per month, which gives you the highest chance of knowing it in 10 months. So rehearsing in 10 to 20% intervals from now until the time that you want to remember it uh, gives you the best recall. So this is how humans remember, right? You give it to them more often, they remember it more. And that is actually how you construct your whole world. Everything that you know, all the memories, go into your perception of the world. And I'm going to show you how extremely strong that effect is, and it can mislead you into believing things that are completely different than reality. So in the US, do you think it is more likely to get hit by lightning or to get shot and killed in a school shooting? Everybody who thinks that's more likely to get hit by lightning, hands up. And school shooting, hands up. I'm actually surprised by this. You guys are too smart than I expected. So it is indeed 10 times more likely to get hit by lightning. Lightning. The, um, the number, I think, was something like almost 500 uh, per year. Only 10% of them die. Um, and school shootings is obviously 10% uh, of that. Uh, but the funny thing is that it's very important in this task to tell you that it was in the US because for, you know, Fortunately, this doesn't happen as often uh, in Germany or in Europe But that you remember one thing better uh, Well, to be honest you you actually didn't I, I used to do this every year for for the last six years and it always worked Yeah, you guys know prob probabilities I think or maybe you figured that the thing that you now thought was less likely would probably be the right one which is also, yeah. But in any case, <laughs> so, um, it works usually because the, you have experienced the school shooting um, news way more often than the news about getting hit by lightning strike because the school shooting is much bigger news than some guy in the woods getting hit by lightning and not dying. And it all has to do with the associations in your head. So let's look at a typical person, let's call him a consumer, and let's zoom in at the organ that does most of his decisions, the brain. So this is a, a visualization of a study, a recent study um, released in Nature, where they had a, a story uh, read to them while they were in the scanner, and then a word like top would be mentioned, and then this whole green area would actually light up. Now what you see here is a representation of the semantic network and spreading activation. So if one of those words is mentioned like top, or in the earlier example, uh, the US, immediately all your associations with the US will become more active, and that you would be quicker to then, for example, think about Trump, was, or tell me whether Trump is a word, yes or no, because the US will trigger that association. Again, because it's more in the news. So let me uh, show you how effective this can be in shaping what you see. Everybody close their eyes, please. Thank you very much. And now everyone with an even age, please open your eyes. Okay, close them again. Now everyone with an uneven age, please open your eyes. And close them again. And now everyone open their eyes and please complete this word. Okay. Now, everybody who saw the left picture and uh, completed the word with soup, hands up. Everybody who saw the right picture and completed the word with soap, please hands up. 
Now, everybody who had those two matching uh, associations, so if you had your hands up, uh, just put them up again, just to make sure. Pretty good. Okay, so the reason obviously is you get primed, right? You see vegetables, you see uh, a pot where some soup could go in, so you think about soup. But if you see this image, you get clean, white, and actually I think even this, you know, my mom at least told me this, that when you go to the dentist, you have to say, ah, and that's obviously also the A in, in soap. So there's many reasons how this influences your perception of this word. And this is really critical to marketing uh, material, we believe, because there are now studies that show that you can quantify the, um, how much people can remember a marketing stimulus based on the match of associations with the product itself. Okay? So in this case, they, this is an ad for sunscreen lotion. And there's a traffic sign here. And then you can see all the associations that flow out of suntan lotion and the traffic sign. And you can see there's overlap. So you can basically quantify the associations of the visual stimulus that match the concept description of the product or what you want to, people to go home with when they see the product. They want to understand that you know, it protects you from an accident which could be sunburn. And this helps, uh, at least us in, in our business, you know, we do market research and we figure out what the associations are with one of those uh, stimuli. And it helps you to, to see the underlying structure of it in terms of how it will influence people's behavior um, that is detached from the picture itself. Right? Because I can give you many pictures that are completely different, but all indicate this accident association, and that will very likely be the driving force behind the people's uh, reaction to it. So when we do it in our experiments, we use tasks like these. This is very similar to what I've shown you before. You get primed by something that very likely you cannot see uh, clearly, but you only have to say whether this thing is a word, yes or no. So the principle is that if you see this, and it primes the concept of fun, then you would be faster to react to the word fun when categorizing it as a word or a non-word. So this is, this is how you can, you know, just uh, with behavior, uh, get whether, uh, whether this works. By the way, my clock shows 625. This, I should have more. I'm just saying. Uh, OK, so this is how we do it um, uh, like this. But uh, another um, application that we have developed is to use uh, a large data set of people's free associations with different kind of concepts and then compute the distance you have to travel between different associations to, for example, figure out what I showed you in the beginning. So if you input soft, fluffy, uh, and couch, you get the concepts like cloud and round. And that then helps you to create marketing stimulus that automatically activates those concepts. Okay? And since you are all our data guys, um, there's another technique that is very successful in um, using a semantic stimulus and making it into something that is more understandable by machines, which is word to vec. So putting a, a, a word uh, into a very high-dimensional vector space. And I don't want to get too much into it, but I just want to assure you that this can also help you to find you know, commonalities between different words to reduce the amount of data that you have to compute. Uh, Paris, Berlin, uh, Baghdad or something, uh, they're all uh, cities, for example, so you can reduce uh, your free text data to, for example, just this is a city, and then see whether mentioning a city has any effect in your data set. But because we are very much interested in, in behavior, obviously regarding to products, I will again show you an example of how this, uh, I believe, strongly influences public opinion as well, and how you can use data to, uh, to check that out. So I've done my bachelor's in Amsterdam, so I know this plant. You may too. Uh, but I do wonder which of these two you think is more likely in your head, right? Do you think that, that uh, marijuana is more for medical use? Or do you think it's something where people should go to jail for? Well, here you see what I, what I believe is one of the most fascinating um, analyses I've seen in a while, where you track the the opinion that uh, marijuana should be legalized over time in the US. And here you take a different, um, what is called uh, FIDF, which is uh, term frequency inverse document frequency, which helps you to, again, reduce the complexity of uh, a paragraph or a headline. In this case, this was a New York Times data tracked over time. And what you basically see is the strength of association between marijuana and drug very early on, or here, uh, medical, 
medical marijuana. And you can see that those two go together. Obviously, you know, this is just a correlation, but I think it makes very, very good sense that once you change people's associations with repeated, um, you know, uh, news uh, or marketing, that you can also change their opinion. And just on a very somber note, if you put someone like Trump in front of a podium and you put him on TV all the time, I believe that it becomes much more likely that people associate the likelihood of him becoming a president uh, because he is already performing as such. And he gets introduced as the next president of the United States. And just that repetition makes it much, uh, much easier for us to process the possibility that he would become president. So this is not all just you know, marketing and kind of games. This can have real life effects, I believe. OK. So I talked a lot about the brain, but I want you to just remember those things. I showed you couches in the beginning. What are you thinking of now? Hopefully, clouds and coins. Then I've shown you this, this sequence. And what I, I hope remember is this U-shaped uh, primacy and recency effect, which underlies a lot of our memory consolidation. And then I began with the US. And I think by now, you may think Trump, because I just mentioned Trump. But back then, I mentioned lightning strikes and uh, school shootings. And then, of course, how priming someone with the stimulus can shape their behavior and how they understand the world. So with memory consolidation, which can focus your, um, your, your search for data at certain places, for example, at the beginning of interaction, for example, with your website, or, or the end, like, for example, the last orders, and associations uh, or, or vector space uh, uh, representation of semantic information, I think that you, that you can really um, enhance your skills as a data scientist and look at the data more in a way that a psychologist would. So then, the next time that you think about clouds, I want you to keep the brain in mind. Thank you very much. <laughs>